Welcome to our Hong Kong Brief Show. Today, we have some intriguing stories lined up for you. First, we'll dive into the world of sports with a roundup of six podcasts that even non-sports fans will love. From exploring the history of gender testing in sports to dissecting the science behind athletic performance, there's something for everyone. Next, we get an inside look at the dramatic moment Texas Congressman Ronnie Jackson treated Donald Trump after a near-fatal assassination attempt. Jackson shares gripping details about that fateful day and his storied career as a physician to multiple U.S. presidents. Finally, we shift gears to the music scene, spotlighting DJ Mustard, the hitmaker behind Kendrick Lamar's latest track. We'll delve into his impressive career, collaborations with top artists, and the personal challenges that have shaped his journey. Please stay tuned for the detailed stories. South China Morning Post If you're already feeling the post-Olympic blues, fear not, as there are plenty of sports podcasts to keep the spirit alive. Good Sport, hosted by Ted-backed Ultimate Frisbee pro Jody Avergan, delves into the world of sports with elite storytelling. From the rise of sports hotbeds to the concept of being in the zone, this podcast offers relatable stories that resonate with both sports enthusiasts and casual listeners. Quite a Good Sport, by the creators of No Such Thing as a Fish, brings a humorous take on different sports, featuring expert insights and quirky facts. The Sports Agents, hosted by British favorites Gabby Logan and Mark Chapman, offers rich discussions filled with personal experiences and interviews with sports figures. Notable episodes include a conversation with Dr. Aaron D'Souza about the controversial topic of legalizing doping. Lastly, Tested from CBC Podcasts examines the history of gender testing in elite sports, raising questions about fairness and the arbitrary lines drawn between genders. South China Morning Post In the aftermath of the assassination attempt on former U.S. President Donald Trump, Texas Congressman Ronnie Jackson has been in the spotlight. Jackson, who served as the personal physician to both Trump and Barack Obama, detailed the severity of Trump's injuries, describing a gunshot wound that narrowly missed entering his head. Jackson's career began in the U.S. Army, where he served in various capacities, including a deployment in Iraq. He was later appointed as the White House physician, a role that brought him both praise and controversy. Jackson's optimistic comments about Trump's health, despite the president's known unhealthy habits, drew criticism. Additionally, Jackson faced allegations of alcohol misuse and mishandling prescription drugs, earning him the nickname Candyman. Despite these controversies, Jackson transitioned to a political career, winning a congressional seat in Texas with Trump's support. His recent treatment of Trump has raised questions about his medical licensing, adding another layer of intrigue to his already complex career. South China Morning Post, DJ Mustard, the mastermind behind Kendrick Lamar's hit diss track, Not Like Us, has a fascinating journey in the music industry. Known for his catchy, club-focused hip-hop sounds, DJ Mustard, born Dijon Isaiah McFarlane, rose to fame through collaborations with artists like Tyga and Jennifer Lopez. His big break came with Tyga's Rack City, which solidified his reputation. Mustard later signed with Rock Nation and launched his own label, Ten Summers Records. On the personal front, Mustard married his longtime girlfriend Chanel Thierry in 2020, but their marriage ended in a contentious divorce two years later, with disputes over financial support and custody of their children. Despite the drama, Mustard is now expecting his fourth child with his current girlfriend, Brittany Stroud. His journey from humble beginnings to becoming a major figure in the music industry is a testament to his talent and resilience. South China Morning Post Olivia Washington, daughter of Hollywood star Denzel Washington, has emerged from her shy childhood to become a notable figure in the theater world. Her latest role in Jeremy O. Harris's controversial play Slave Play, which explores race, sexuality, and identity through the lens of three interracial couples, has garnered significant attention and sparked debates. The play, 
which earned a record number of Tony nominations on Broadway, has now opened in London. The UK organizers' decision to designate two nights of the 12-week run as blackout nights for black theatregoers drew criticism, including from former Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. Washington defended the decision, emphasizing the importance of creating welcoming environments and the role of art in challenging societal norms. Born in 1991 alongside her twin brother Malcolm, Olivia credits her mother, a Juilliard graduate, for helping her overcome her shyness through dance classes. Her acting career, which began after graduating from NYU, includes roles in TV shows like Empire and Mr. Robot, and she recently starred in the film-breaking and the absurdist comedy I'm a Virgo. Washington is determined to pursue complex, multidimensional roles and collaborate with talented writers and directors, particularly those who are black women. SCMP Opinion Soong Dao Lee, a Nobel Prize-winning physicist, passed away at the age of 97, leaving behind a legacy that significantly impacted both the scientific community and the relationship between China and the United States. Li's pioneering work in particle physics, alongside fellow laureate Yang Chenming, is celebrated globally. However, in China, he is also revered for his efforts to advance science education and foster cooperation between his homeland and his adopted country. During the early years of China's reform and opening up, Li advised Deng Xiaoping on the importance of establishing postdoctoral studies, which played a crucial role in nurturing China's scientific talent. He also promoted programs that enabled young Chinese scientists to study in the U.S., many of whom returned to become leaders in their fields. Li's contributions included helping to set up the National Natural Science Foundation of China and advocating for major projects like the Beijing Electron-Positron Collider. His work in facilitating international collaborations, such as the Neutrino Study at Dia Bay, exemplifies his commitment to advancing science through cooperation. Li's legacy serves as a reminder of the potential for mutual enrichment between China and the U.S., even amid current tensions. South China Morning Post The United States has expanded its list of banned imports from Chinese companies, targeting five additional firms over allegations of forced labor involving Uyghur minorities. The companies, including Hong Kong-based Rare Earth Magnesium Technology Group Holdings and its parent Century Sunshine Group Holdings, as well as Zijin Mining Group co-subsidiary Xinjiang Habahia Shield Copper Co., have been added to the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act entity list. This list now comprises over 70 entities linked to products such as cotton apparel, vehicle parts, vinyl flooring, and solar panels. U.S. officials accused Chinese authorities of operating labor camps for Uyghurs and other Muslim minority groups in Xinjiang, a claim Beijing vehemently denies. A spokesperson for the Chinese embassy in Washington dismissed the forced labor allegations as unfounded and politically motivated, asserting that China will continue to protect the rights and interests of its companies. The move reflects ongoing efforts by the U.S. to eliminate goods made with forced labor from its supply chain, amidst broader geopolitical tensions between the two nations. BBC British Airways, BA, will cease its flights to Beijing starting in October, a decision driven by the ongoing ban on Western airlines from flying over Russian airspace following the 2022 invasion of Ukraine. This restriction has forced BA to adopt longer routes, resulting in increased flight times and higher operational costs. Despite resuming flights last year post-COVID, BA's parent company IAG cited weak demand in China as a significant factor. Consequently, BA will suspend its Beijing flights until November 2025, while also reducing its flights to Hong Kong. However, flights to Shanghai will continue. This move follows Virgin Atlantic's recent decision to cancel its Shanghai route due to similar operational challenges. South China Morning Post Hong Kong will stop offering the Sinovac COVID-19 vaccine once the current stocks expire in October. The Center for Health Protection confirmed that Sinovac would no longer produce the inactivated Coronavac vaccine. 
Authorities are anticipating the availability of a new vaccine targeting the prevalent coronavirus variant by the end of the year. Residents who prefer inactivated vaccines are urged to get their first dose soon to complete the series before supplies run out. Alternative vaccines like BioNTech's mRNA jab, as well as Moderna and CanSino, are available. The government is also working on new vaccination arrangements, especially for high-risk groups, to ensure continued protection against rising COVID-19 levels. The Independent Tim Walls, Minnesota governor and Kamala Harris's running mate, has faced a barrage of attacks from Republicans, particularly focusing on his alleged ties to China. Critics like Donald Trump and J.D. Vance have accused him of being overly sympathetic to China, even suggesting he wants to ship American jobs there. Despite these claims, Walls's actual history with China includes teaching English in Guangdong province in 1989-1990 and later running an educational exchange program. In Congress, he has taken a strong stance on human rights issues in China, co-sponsoring motions against the Chinese government's actions. While Walls advocates for less adversarial relations with China, his record shows a commitment to addressing human rights abuses and maintaining a balanced foreign policy. South China Morning Post reports that Leon Tong Ing Kit, the first person convicted under Hong Kong's national security law, is among the first graduates of the Ethics College at Stanley's Pak Sha Wan Correctional Institution. Tong, who was sentenced to nine years in prison for inciting secession and committing a terrorist act during the 2019 anti-government protests, expressed deep regret for his actions. During the graduation ceremony, Tong acknowledged that he had been misled by biased information and now aims to make amends by contributing positively to society. He credited Project PATH, a rehabilitation scheme for inmates with protest-related offenses, for changing his outlook on violence and national identity. Tong, along with 74 other inmates, completed a one-year applied education diploma equivalent to Level 2 in five subjects under the Diploma of Secondary Education. The program, supported by instructors from the Metropolitan University of Hong Kong and volunteer tutors, aims to help inmates rebuild their values and sense of national identity. In another report by South China Morning Post, two workers were rescued after being stranded mid-air for two hours while cleaning Highcliffe, a luxury high-rise in Hong Kong. The incident occurred on the 60th floor of the building, which is one of the thinnest in the world. The workers, aged 42 and 45, were left hanging when their working platform malfunctioned. Security guards at Highcliffe contacted emergency services around 7 p.m., and firefighters successfully rescued the pair by 9 p.m. Highcliffe, located on the south slope of Happy Valley, is the tallest residential-only building on Hong Kong Island, with construction completed in 2003. Despite the harrowing experience, the workers were brought to safety without any reported injuries. The Telegraph reveals that British Airways has decided to cancel all flights to Beijing until November next year due to the high costs of avoiding Russian airspace. This decision follows Vladimir Putin's ban on UK carriers from Russian airspace, forcing them to take longer, less economical routes. British Airways had only resumed its London-Beijing route in June 2023 after a three-year hiatus due to COVID-19. The cancellation is a significant move as the airline had previously described this route as one of its most important. The market for flights from Britain to Beijing will now be dominated by state-owned Chinese carriers, which are not restricted from flying through Russian airspace. This decision comes shortly after Virgin Atlantic also halted flights to Shanghai, leaving Hong Kong as its only East Asia destination. Both airlines have timed their suspensions to coincide with the end of the summer travel season and are offering affected customers rebooking options or full refunds. South China Morning Post reports that Macau police have detained a 48-year-old Hong Kong woman and a 40-year-old mainland Chinese man in connection with the murder of a man found in a luxury hotel room in Kotai. 
The victim, a 40-year-old Hong Konger, had a 20cm knife wound in his neck and multiple injuries, including a fractured skull. Police believe the victim was involved in illegal money-changing operations at Macau casinos and had won 2.5 million Hong Kong dollars on the day of his murder. The mainland suspect, who worked under the victim, was seen entering the victim's hotel room and later meeting the Hong Kong woman to hand over a bag believed to contain cash. Both suspects were arrested later that day, with police recovering 1.3 million Hong Kong dollars in cash and blood-stained clothing. The suspects are detained for murder, robbery, and money laundering. South China Morning Post reveals that Xiang Zhang, vice-chancellor of the University of Hong Kong, HKU, failed to secure a senior role for ex-official Kenneth Chen Weon due to a governance role. Zhang had recommended Chen for the role of executive vice president overseeing administration and finance with an annual package of over 5 million Hong Kong dollars, but the governing council did not approve the salary range. The council criticized Zhang for not disclosing this failure and accused him of breaching governance. Chen was later tipped for a vice president role at the Chinese University of Hong Kong, CUHK. The incident is part of ongoing tensions between Zhang and the HKU Council, which have included other controversial recommendations and accusations of misconduct and mismanagement against Zhang. The Council's chairwoman, Priscilla Wong Puizi, has promised to investigate these claims. The Independent reports that British Airways has decided to suspend its route from London Heathrow to Beijing starting October 26, 2024, due to increasing competition from Chinese airlines. Chinese carriers like Air China and China Southern offer shorter and cheaper flights to Beijing by flying over Russian airspace, which British Airways is not permitted to do. This results in a significant time and cost advantage for Chinese airlines. Despite British Airways calling it one of our most important routes when it was restored in June 2023 after a hiatus due to COVID restrictions, the airline is now facing sparse passenger numbers and competitive pressure. British Airways will continue to operate daily flights to Shanghai and Hong Kong. Virgin Atlantic is also facing similar challenges and will drop its Heathrow-Shanghai flight, having already ended flights to Hong Kong and Tokyo. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email. Scrolling through the headlines, another crazy day. Six degrees of stories, connecting in the way. From the weather to the sports, and everything we see. screens for free six degree world where the news comes in a world every story ties together like a ribbon and a twirl sit back and watch it all